Croc brog. Croak brag. Croc broad? Croc brog. Croc brogged. Croak bragged. Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't know the right way to say this word, so I think I'm gonna just choose one off the list of the several different ways I found that people were pronouncing this, and we'll go with croc broad. This is a Scandinavian weaving technique that is usually woven on a floor loom using three shafts, but today I have put together a pattern for you so that you can weave it on a frame loom. So let's get started. Okay, we're gonna talk about the pattern first, and when you first look at this pattern, you're probably gonna be like, holy crap, Janelle, this is a really long pattern, and I don't know if I can handle this, but I want to tell you, that yes, you can. Looking at this pattern as a whole is a little bit overwhelming, but trust me when I say it's not as hard as you think. I've drafted this in a way so that you can just weave every single row once, and then when you get to the top of the pattern, you're done the piece. The thing I love about Croak Broad is that every single section of three is exactly the same. So you can see we're starting with an over one under three, then the next row is a plain weave row, but it's not on the same warp strings is in the previous row and then finally the last row covers up the rest of the warp strings and what this does is it makes sure that every single warp string has gotten woven on so it's kind of like every three wefts is actually one row now that's just a little aside it's not totally important we're still just going to be weaving this one row at a time but you're going to start to notice that pattern as you weave this piece so you can see on this pattern, I've colored it in a way so that you know when to switch colors just to make it really simple for you. So I'm going to be using a yellow, a green, and an orange, and you can see that those colors repeat throughout. For the weft, I'm gonna be using Loops and Threads Cozy Wool. I have four different colors here. They're all very fall and beautiful, but you can choose any four colors as you want. You're gonna want one color that's gonna act as your background and three colors for your flowers. This is a bulky weight yarn, but it is a little bit thinner than something like Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick, and I did find that this works better. I'll be using one of our Spruce & Linen Mini Looms. This is the perfect size for a mug rug, and I'm going to be warping on 17 strings with 8-8 cotton. You can also use something like 4-8 cotton. You just won't have as full of tassels on your mug rug. Since we're weaving with an odd amount of warp strings, we're gonna have one end of the warp start at the bottom and the other end end at the top. You know, I love a little painter's tape to tape down my loom so that it doesn't shift on me. This is seriously like, this was the best discovery I've ever had when it comes to weaving on the flat, which I like to do for you here on these videos so that you can really see what I'm doing. Um, painter's tape is just my best friend now. I love it. If you're weaving on one of our little acrylic mini looms, you're gonna want to weave with a piece of cardstock that's about two and an eighth inches. You don't wanna go any taller than that where you're not gonna have enough room at the top to tie off your tassels. I'm just weaving this in with plain weave and this just gives us a solid base to beat down onto because this is one of those weaving structures where we're going to be beating down pretty firmly. Next up, I'm grabbing about two arms lengths of the off-white color of yarn. But before we get started with the pattern, we want to create a nice solid base for this piece. So I'm going to do one row of twining. There's definitely some little things that are gonna be different about weaving this compared to weaving a twill. So definitely stick around for this whole video and make sure you get all my little tips and tricks. I'm gonna grab a second tapestry needle and a length of my first color, which for me is going to be this sort of mustardy color. And this is gonna be one of those projects that if at all possible, you're gonna want two tapestry needles. I like to work with one of each. You can find these in our shop. I like to work with one of each of the woods. So one walnut and one maple, because then I can have, let's say the white yarn with the maple needle and the yellow yarn with the walnut one. And so when I go to reach for the needle, I know just in my brain that the light one is with the off-white yarn and the walnut one is with whatever color I'm working with. Now, when you're weaving the colors, you're only gonna need about four widths at a time. So I'm just gonna measure that out. And I'm always generous because it's, it's really annoying to try to weave with a length that's really short. So on my patterns, every colored in block, so that's on this one, it's the yellow, the green, the orange, and the gray are all going to represent your weft going over one warp string. And all the white blocks are representing going under a warp string. I know for a lot of you, if you're new to patterns or they make you feel a little bit overwhelmed, and this one is pretty big, so I totally get it. There's a couple of things that you can do to make it feel a little bit less overwhelming. The first one, and it's one that I continually use, is I just grab a second piece of paper and I cover up the other rows. And then as I'm going through the pattern, I just scooch this up one row at a time so that it's less overwhelming. 
Another thing you can do, especially on this pattern, because you're only weaving each row once is you can actually just cross off the rows. You could highlight them. You could put a little check mark by them. Whatever you need to do to sort of like get your brain to not just feel sheer overwhelm, which I can totally resonate with. So for this first row, it's super simple. We're just going over one, under three, and we're repeating that over one, under three, over one, under three, over one, under three. One trick I recently learned and I will try to find whose blog I was reading to learn this, is when you're doing your edges, what you can do instead of just doing any of my tricks, if those don't work that well for you, what you can do to get your edges really clean is to actually just sort out your edge first before beating the rest of the weft down. So I have my edge exactly where I want it, then I'm gonna pull that down and then I can beat down the rest with my comb. So that's just another trick if you're having a hard time with those clean edges. Row two is also super easy, and it's just under one, over one. So it's a plain weave row. And again, if you wanna use that new trick, figure out your edge first, and then beat down the rest. One thing I wanna say here is you do wanna beat down your rows tightly, but not excessively. While we aren't supposed to really be seeing the warp strings in this kind of weave structure, what I found is if you weave the wefts too close together, you're gonna get a lot of curl when you take this piece off the loom and we kind of want to try to counteract that a little bit. Now we're on row three and we're bringing in the yellow. What I like to do is always look at where other tails are on my piece. In this case, I have one on the left, so I'm gonna start my yellow on the right. Now, this is gonna be a little bit different than a lot of the twills that we do in that we are actually not going to have it go over this far right warp string. So we're going under two, over one, under, under three, over one, under three, over one, under three, over one, and then finishing off with the under two. And we're just gonna let that tail, you know, leave your tail decently long. I've got about three inches here at least. And we're gonna let that tail just sit to the back of the loom. We're not gonna worry about it not being on that edge string. Now, moving up to row four, you can see that row four and row one are the same. So like I said, this is the same three sequences over and over again. So we're going back in with the off-white. I'm not going to interlock these wefts. I'm just gonna bring up the white and do my over one under three. And then row four. Again, not worrying that this yarn is not on the edge string. We're going under one, over one. And I'll show you what this looks like. So it's actually going to, to loop around this string. Now, this isn't necessarily the way that all croak broad is woven, but in the case of our mug rug, in an effort to make the edges really nice and clean, I'm gonna show you it this way on the edges so that we don't have all sorts of weird bulk on the sides. Okay, now we are on row six and we're back with the off-white. Once again, I'm not interlocking the two wefts on the edge. I'm just bringing this white over and we're going under two, over one, under three, over one, under three, over one, under three, over one, under two. And moving up to the next row. Once you get a hang of these three sequences, you will start be being able to weave this faster and faster because it's, it's actually really simple, but if you still need, you know, the guidance of the pattern for every row, that's totally okay too. So now here we have two yellow rows in a row. And again, I'm going, not worrying about this edge string, I'm going under two, over one, under three, over one. You can see that we have now created our very first flower, and that was the last row of the flower. So I'm just gonna lift this up so you can see that next we'll be going to the green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off the excess of the yellow and just again, let that hang out. And then we can move on and we're doing, now we're doing three rows of just the white. So we can repeat that sequence with just the white. Okay, so here's our first way we have to sort of cheat the system a little bit. So we have a problem here. We have no strings going over this warp string here. So I'm gonna just back up. And the reason for this is because we were already going over this warp string. So now when we turn around, we can't 
exactly go over it again. So I'm actually gonna go under four, over one, under three, over one, under three, over one, under three, over one. Because we're beating the weft down so firmly, you can see that we have plenty of thickness on the edges. So we didn't need that extra time around the warp string. So that's kind of what I do to cheat it. If it's going over a warp string and we need to go over again, I'm just gonna go under it. So we wanna keep those edges really nice and clean. This is sort of like a feeling thing where I'm not crushing this down as firmly as I can get it. I'm letting it sort of you know, we are seeing the warp strings a tiny little bit. Again, in an effort to both see the flower shape come through as well as not have this piece curl really badly when we take it off. So once again, we're at another spot where this weft was coming under and in the next row, technically I'm supposed to go under again. But instead, I'm just gonna cheat it. I'm gonna go over one, under one, and then I'm back to following the pattern. So over one, under three, over one, under three, over one, under three, over one, under two. And if you're thinking to yourself, how come you didn't just like mark those for us in this pattern? The reason is because if you started on the other side of the pattern, that actually is gonna be incorrect. So I'm just showing you how you can cheat it as you go where you need to. Next up, we have the green. And we're just gonna continue following this pattern all the way up. It's as simple as that. So it does weave up you know, very similarly to a twill pattern, but we are just kind of beating it down a little more. Since I started the yellow on the right, I'm gonna start the green on the left. Next up, we have the orange, and I'm starting on the right side again to just keep staggering all those ends. My off-white yarn is almost gone. I'm gonna just loop this back around one time here, just to give it that clean edge. And then I'm going to take a new piece and I'm gonna start again on the other side so that we don't have too many tails on one end. Now that I've completed the whole pattern, all I'm gonna do is a twining stitch, the same thing that we did at the very beginning. So even though this last row was plain weave, I'm going to do another row of plain weave and then twining over that. But before I do the twining, I'm actually going to cut off this end, leaving a nice long tail, and then do my twining from the other end. The reason for this is because if you just turn around and go the other way, it's gonna really wanna suck this warp string in and we don't want that. So we're going from the other side so that we can pull everything tight from left to right in my case. And then what sometimes I like to do at the end of my twining is I'll just kind of loop this back around just so it's a little bit easier to tuck in later so it's not going underneath. So I'm gonna leave a nice long tail again. And now we're ready to finish up the back. Now stick with me here because the back of this is gonna be a little bit different from um, some of the other ones we've done. You can see the back looks a little bit crazy here because you know there's a lot of skipping warp strings underneath and so it just creates this, you know, crazy looking back. So the first thing we wanna do is we're going to tuck all the ends from the front into the back so that we don't miss any. And that's just gonna make things a little bit more efficient and less likely to skip one. And you can see we have a ton of ends to tuck in. So there's a couple of important things to note when you're doing this. You don't wanna be, like it's tempting to just take these ends and go straight down or straight up. But what is gonna happen if you do that is it's going to create so much bulk on the edges that you're gonna have sort of ridges on the sides and then it'll be thinner in the middle. And so, Instead, we're going to do this. We are going to take these ends and we're only grabbing the loops on the back and I'm going at an angle out towards the middle. And you can do quite a few here if you like, since this is a mug rug, you wanna make sure none of the ends are gonna pop out. 
So I'm going to pull this through and then I'm just going to trim off the edge. Careful not to trim your wefts. And you can see that that just hides really nicely in the back. So I'm going to keep doing that. So I'm going to take the next one and I'm again going to thread it through at an angle, moving towards the center, pull it through. Don't ream on it because look what happens when you ream. You can, you're going to mess up your edges if you do that. So don't ream on it. Trim off the excess let it tuck in. And basically what we're doing here then is we're spreading out the bulk of those ends so that we don't have ridges. Sometimes you cut your tails a little too short and they're hard to thread in, but it's not all lost. So what you're gonna do instead of threading it up and trying to get it in when it's short, you're just gonna thread your needle in first. So thread your needle through where you want that end to go. Then put the yarn through that head of the needle and pull it through. And that just means it's, it's not a total wash if you cut those ends a little bit too short. Okay, it's time to take this off the loom. And now there's a couple things you can do. If your warp isn't excessively tight, you can pull it off like this. If it is really tight, you can cut it off, but you wanna try to cut it off really close to the top of the loom. Another thing you can do is take out the cardstock, and this will just naturally mean that the, the warp is sitting a little bit looser. And now it's so much easier to pull off those warp strings. And again, what I like to do is I'm pulling up toward the notch and then I'm very carefully taking it off the notch, never reaming on those tiny little notches. Now I'm gonna just grab a weight, but just use anything heavy and we're just gonna set this down on top of the weaving. It's just a lot easier to tie these knots when there's something holding everything in place. Then what I'm gonna start doing is tying overhand knots. Since we have an odd amount of warp strings, one end of each side will have to be a grouping of three instead of only two. So I'm gonna start with three. And these are a little bit short to tie these overhand knots, but we can make it work. Now I'm gonna use a ruler and figure out how long I want the little tassels on my piece to be. I might actually use the weight again for this. And I'm thinking about an inch long maybe. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks good to me. So I'm gonna cut my little fringes here at about an inch long. I'm not being too super precious about this, just getting them to be about an inch. And then we can use a little rope brush or whatever kind of comb you have kicking around. Now that I've cut them, I actually want to cut them a little bit shorter. I'm going to eyeball this. So if that makes you nervous, look away. <laughs> but I just want them a little shorter. I'm actually lining this up with the groove of my table here. And I'm just going to use that groove to cut them just a bit shorter. If you enjoyed making this mug rug, click here to watch our mug rug playlist.